Well, welcome to Ristorante da Giovanino, and we're going to see the culinary skills of Martina today. And it was her grandmother, Aurora, who cooked our wedding lunch in the kitchen, which was back there in 1978. And we served 50 people here. They were seated in uh, two tables. And at the end of the wedding lunch, sitting on one of the tables was somebody playing the accordion so everyone could dance. So the culinary skills of Ristorante da Giovanino have always been part of our life here on the land in Umbria. Now we're going to see Martina at work in the kitchen. The kitchen is no longer back here. They've enlarged the restaurant. It's over this way. Let's go. We're in the kitchen where all the goodness comes for people eating at Ristorante da Giovanino. And Martina is making a special dish requested for a family baptism coming up, 40 guests. And she is going to cook these purple potatoes grown locally. We call this Kilometro Zero. Look at that potato. And they're grown at Col Fiorito, an area near us, actually famous for its potato cultivation. And they're going to be cooked in water. First, the potatoes will be put in cold water brought to a boil and then simmered. And she's going to put in what we call sale grosso, the big rock salt. How much? QB. That's the yeah. word to remember in Italian cooking. Quanto basta. Whatever it takes. Okay, the potatoes are going in now into a huge pot of water, cold water. Then they'll be brought to a boil. This dish is called capellacci alle patate rosse, pat patate yeah. viola, and the cappellacci means a big hat. This is kind of a large tortellini, which we're going to see her making. And it will be stuffed with the potatoes, and then she's going to make uh, this sort of sauce. It sounds very tasty. Butter seasoned with thyme, and then guanciale, which is pork cheek, uh, browned it until crispy. And here goes the amount of salt. It's about two fistfuls. One and a half. One and a half. And she can add more salt later yeah. if necessary. So we don't want to exaggerate. Una cosa importante che l'acqua deve ricoprire le patate. What is important, have a look, is that the water must cover the potatoes. Altrimenti non cuociono in maniera omogenea. Otherwise, the potatoes will not cook in a homogeneous way. Some will be more cooked, some undercooked. Adesso dobbiamo aspettare 40 minuti per la cottura e poi andiamo a preparare il ripieno. Okay, we're going to wait about 40 minutes for the potatoes to cook, and then we're going to see Martina work at the ripieno, which means the filling or the stuffing. You know, the Italian word for full is pieno. Ripieno is what fills something up. Grazie, Martina. You're welcome. Now, Martina has boiled the potatoes. Those purple potatoes. And when she can perforate them with a fork, they're ready. So she knows they're ready. Out they come. And they're not peeled. Sono già sbucciate? No. No. They're not peeled. Okay. Okay. Adesso andiamo a spezzarle. And you, you can squash them con la buccia? Sì, guarda come faccio. Ah. Praticamente prendo lo schiaccio a patate. Ah. Ah. a metà. She's got a potato squasher. She's cutting them in half. Non so. Così con la buccia di volta yeah. Che fa il primo. Ah ah. That it's important to have the peel facing up, and this is going to, you know, make it easier and quicker. Yeah. To squash these wonderful, look at these, this wonderful color of these purple potatoes, absolutely divine. Martina, is the flavor of this a bit different from the white potato, the russet potato? Ma il gusto principalmente. Quasi lo stesso, sono leggermente più delicate, ma più che altro è una questione estetica del colore. Ah. So she's saying the flavor is quite similar, 
It's more a question of the aesthetics, the lovely purple color. Mm. Well, they are beautiful. Do they cost about the same per kilo or are they more costly? More costly. More costly. Something special, you pay more. Yeah. <laughs> Now she's going to add the ingredients which she needs for the filling. Freshly grated parmigiano. Eh? Io faccio tutto molto a occhio. Più che altro mi affida il mio gusto. Okay, she says I do everything by eye. I trust my nose more than my eye. Well, the smell is delightful. <laughs> Allora, parmigiano, parmesan, burro, butter, all'occhio, all'occhio, cubi, cubi. <laughs> pepe, pepper, cubi, oh, is this divine, e sale, and here comes the salt, and this time it's fine salt, fino, no, si, 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 and they've got a phone call, maybe someone's booking si. a lunch or dinner here, <laughs> okay, okay, adesso andiamo a girare, but she doesn't need to answer the phone because they'll be handling that at the coffee bar where her parents are working. Now she's using a lot of muscle work here. <laughs> and squashing. There's something, Some calde, eh? there's something therapeutic about this, Martina. Terapia, questo. Sì. <laughs> La gressione. Rilassa. <laughs> it relaxes. I said you can get your aggression out with the potatoes. She said it's very relaxing. Martina, did you invent this recipe? Yep. Oh. <laughs> She's a creative cook. How long have you been working here cooking, Martina? Uh, I work here uh, since you were born. <laughs> but yeah. in the kitchen is uh, maybe six years. Six years. You've been yeah. the primary cook. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now your mother is your assistant. Before <laughs> yes, your assistant, no. your mother. No. Uh, we are at the same uh, at the same level. Also. Yeah, but you helped your mother before. That's the mama for the babysitter. She said her mother is the babysitter now because she's got an adorable little boy, Jacopo. <laughs> and so Martina's mother, Serenella, Mauro's wife, uh, divides her time between serving guests at the coffee bar, assisting in the kitchen, handling the grocery store, and sometimes babysitting. Allora, quando il burro è sciolto, when the, but, when the butter's melted, andiamo a assaggiare per vedere se dobbiamo aggiungere qualche ingrediente. Now she's testing it. Salt. salt. I wonder. Mm -hmm. A little bit more salt. And, and parmesan. And a little bit more parmesan. But you have to be careful because the parmesan is salty. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> <coughs> So it costs, but it has to be good. Parmesan is costly, but the dish has to be delicious. Quanto viene adesso a chilo parmigiano? Dovrebbe venire intorno ai 14-15 euro al chilo. About 14-15 euro per chilo for good parmesan. Poi eventualmente se il ripieno risulta troppo duro si può aggiungere un po' di panna, però in questo caso è morbido. She said, if my filling were a bit too stiff, I would add a bit of cream, but it's the right consistency, so I'm not adding any cream. Perfect. Perfetto. <laughs> Buono. No. Buonissimo. Okay. Now we have Nona Rosella here. And she's been making pasta for 70 years about, since she was about nine years old, without exactly saying age. And she's going to roll out the pasta, which she's made with 30 eggs. Look at the nice yellow, good yolk she used. And for 30 eggs, how much flour, Martina, was that? Almost 100 grams of farina. Every egg, 100 grams of flour, so we have three kilos of flour. See? Hey, three kilos of flour multiplied times 2.2 and that'll tell you how many pounds. Look at the muscles in Signora Rosella. She grew up in an extended family, all the family in the house together. 
eating together and she was cooking for sometimes 22 people. They all live together. Okay. Okay, now she's going to roll. And it's rolling with the wrists. Always the power is right here. Ah, she says for a demonstration, she's going to just do a small uh, little sfoglia here, the rolling out of the dough. Usually she'd be making one which is much huger and would fill the whole board. So she's doing a small one here as a demonstration for us. And again, the pressure is really coming from the lower part of the hands lower part of the palm. Sometimes the women are using their wrists. She might be altering. And then she's wrapping it around, smoothing it out. <coughs> the unforgettable grandmother. 79 years old and not feeling it. She's often here cooking. She makes all the homemade pasta that you serve. And there's nothing like the homemade tagliatelle with meat sauce here at Giovanino's made by Signora Rosella. Ma non si stanca mai? Eh, no. Rosé? No. Perché? Perché sono abituata alla piccola. But don't you ever get tired? No. I said, why not? She said, I've been doing this since I was a little girl. You know the Italians are among the longest lived people in the world. She's an example. Now, Rosella has finished the sfoglia and Martina wants to see if it's transparent enough for her capellacci. How did it come out, Martina? Va bene? Va bene, va bene. Eh, Rosella, Rosella brava. Brava. It can't be too fine for the capellacci or the dough will tear as she fills it. Now, look at, she's going to make all the forms of the big capellacci is really big, ugly hats. But there's nothing ugly about them at all. They're really quite beautiful. Mm, these are going to be these are going to be filled by Martina. Martina, can we call the cappellacci a tortelloni or not the tortelloni? Really? Si, si. Also tortelloni. Si, si, ha la stessa, sono due parole, ma il significato è lo stesso. And Martina is going to work over here and she is going to put in the filling. Now, here is her filling of the purple potato filling. Did you make the bag, the plastic bag, Martina? Did you make this yourself? Mm. <laughs> sono... It's kind of your invention? <laughs> no, sono degli strumenti appositi. No, it's a particular questo. instrument that's used to fill um, the cappellacci. Una volta messo il ripieno, bagniamo leggermente i bordi. Now she's um, lightly um, dampening the borders. Is that with butter? What are you using? No, aqua. Water, just water. And that makes it easier to fold. Prima facciamo una mezzaluna. She's making a half moon. Poi prendiamo i due angoli e li andiamo a chiudere. And then she closes the two corners. And there's our ugly little hat, which I think is a beautiful little hat. The cappellacci. How old were you the first time you helped make tortellini? Do you have any idea? Mm. Ma diciamo che quando mi sono buttata all'interno della cucina mi è venuto tutto spontaneo. Cioè mm. da quando ho iniziato a lavorare in cucina ho iniziato a, a fare la pasta ripiena. So she doesn't remember exactly, but she said as soon as I entered this kitchen, I started helping making homemade pasta, inventing new sì, recipes sì. too. Diciamo che io inizialmente sono partita con uh, la pasticceria. Mm -hmm. Poi mi sono appassionata anche a, al salato. She said my first passion was really pastries, the sweet side of the cooking. But then I became very interested in what's called in Italian il salato. That is the salty one, that is the savory foods or the non-sweet ones. Now, Martina is doing a nice demonstration for us of the delicious pasta dish she will be making for 40 people in about a week. And she told me that they'll have just a few of these because they're having a second portion of pasta as part of this baptismal banquet. 
So they'll be having an auntie pasta, two types of pasta, probably two second courses, sí, mixed, mixed roasts, <laughs> and then all sorts of vegetables as well, and desserts. So this is a sample of a single portion. Sí. And each single portion will have the guanciale, pork Lima. cheek, sí. Capellacci with the viola. The capellacci with the purple potatoes, which she made for us. Prima cosa andremo a mettere in cottura i cappellacci. Um, Martina, a question. She's going to put them in to cook. I notice that you're going to lift them in. Why can't you just slide the dish in? She said the reason she was going to pick them up with this is so the water wouldn't splash. I said, well, let's see this trick. Go ahead. <laughs> ah, I see no splashing water coming over us. And she's already salted the water sí. with sale grosso. QB, don't forget, quanto basta as much as it needs. Okay. Nel frattempo che il cappellaccio guancio lo mettiamo a incroccantire il guanciale. Padella bella roente. While they're cooking, she is going to render this crispy in a nice hot frying pan. Obviously no fat needed because there's the fat in the yes. meat, right? And this guanciale they have in their little alimentari grocery store attached to the dining room and attached to the coffee bar. So at Giovanino's you can drop in for a cafe in the morning with cakes made by Martina and her mother. Or you can drop in for a prosciutto sandwich and a glass of local vino rosso. Or you can come in the evening for dinner. And lunch on Sundays. Okay, this is pronto. When it becomes bello dorado and croccante. Have a look at this. Let's zoom in a bit. And we can see that it's nice and crispy and golden. Okay, okay. She's setting that aside. Adesso prendiamo il burro con il timo. Now this is the butter. Già and, già she's, and she's added the herb thyme to it called timo in Italian. And the timo is already in this butter. How do you know when they're cooked? Come sai quando sono cotti? Cioè no, solitamente la pasta fresca um, in 5 minuti è pronta ma anche meno. Okay. Ma non so, io ormai è l'abitudine, lo vedo. Inizialmente assaggiavo, eh. adesso lo vedo dal colore della pasta. Ah, she said, usually four or five minutes. She said, in the beginning I really wasn't sure and I'd have to taste one. Now, looking at the oh. pasta, the cappellacci, I sort of know by the color when they're cooked. Quando inizia proprio a schiarire, vedi quanto sta diventando. Uh, in fact, they're starting to become a lighter yellow. Guarda quanto sono cresciuti. Eh, and they've grown too with the cooking, expanded. Gonfiati, ma non si gonfiati. It's the potatoes also, they're cooking and the cappellacci are swelling up. Yes, we can see, I don't know if you can see in the pot, but this is a much lighter yellow than the, when they were when they hit the water. So they're almost ready. Sì. And into the butter with thyme. But when you're cooking these for 30 or 40 people, mm -hmm. you're not taking them out one by one. No, uno per uno. Yeah. They have the huge They have the huge baskets here, these strainers here when she's cooking for many, many people, of course. But this is a special uh, demonstration for us. Mamma mm. mia, ceo profumo. There's already, it's that, it's that you can just smell a bit the thyme. It's a profumo, the butter and the thyme together. Siamo pronti, adesso veni il piatto e così la assaggiate. Okay, and <laughs> what about the bacon? When is that going, the guanciale? So I mean, bravo. the pork cheek. It's going, going to be on top, top on See? the plate. Oh, okay. So she's going to show us when it's ready for serving. Grazie. On the plate. Putting them all on the plate. You know, I don't know. Uh, Italian food is culinary poetry. <laughs> <laughs> 
at how beautifully she just lines them up. Oh, this is important, isn't it? Just seeing visually. She has a little bit of culinary adornment here. This is thyme. Timo? See the little branches of thyme? Si. E qualcosa per de qualche fogliolino per decorare. She's just putting some other culinary leaves on to decorate it. You see this decoration? They're edible! Using a little form, Martina made them and they're parmigiano, uova, farina. So after they eat, and butter, after they eat the capellacci, they can nibble the decorations. Incredibile. And you're going to do 30 dishes like that? Mamma <laughs> mia. But Martina, will you be able to serve 30 dishes hot? And there's no parmesan on top no, because perché... parmesan is in yeah. the mixture. <laughs> the parmesan is in the potato mixture. This is, uh, hold it up, Martina. Let's see you with your gorgeous dish. Isn't that something? Buon appetito. Grazie. <laughs>